Nikes. What? Huh? What? What? Man. This is supposed to go in. Don't forget to this add is, your sugar. This is supposed to go in. Thankfully, no, no, it's not. It's, it's, it's just beer. It'll be fine. Yeah. Alright, we are going to brew a double IPA today, but it's going to be more like a one and a half because we forgot the dextrose. What are you going to do? So according to our book on IPAs, the definition of a double is as follows. Original gravity 1075 to 1010. Final gravity 1012 to 1020. ABV 6 to 8.4%. Bitterness or IBUs 65 to 100. Our starting gravity for this will be 1058, which as I mentioned is a bit low. The final gravity is going to be 1010, which means our ABV will be 6.3%, and the actual IBUs for this recipe will be 133, which is why we decided to call this beer the Resting Bitter Beer Face. Okay, and one last thing before we start. We actually took out a little bit of water right at the top of the brew day because our grains were not going to fit in the basket. It turns out we actually didn't need to do this. We, actually, we just accidentally had too much water in the recipe to begin with. Um, so you'll see us do that and we, we talk about taking it out, but we never actually take it out. Um, we've changed the recipe on the website to reflect this. So if you follow the recipe, you shouldn't have to take any water out because the recipe will be right. However, if you do follow that recipe, your gravity numbers will be different um, from the ones that we state. Total grain bill is 16.22 pounds. And then we're going to be using 11.75 ounces of hops. Um, that's during the brew day and then dry hopping. So she should be she should be a happy one. Dude, we're gonna be taking it to the limit. Yeah. Real cool. Real, real cool. Really nice. I like to just like do it slow. Yeah. Yeah. Do the old. Get the surface tension out of there. Mm -hmm. All right, you ready? Yeah. Real nice. Let that drain for a bit. So we took 20, 40 ounces out yeah, at the beginning. Cool. Yeah. Um, I, we didn't end up adding it back. Um, as you can see, we have about seven and a half gallons of pre-boiled wort in there. Um, Beersmith said we should have 7.2. So we're actually above what we had. So we lost less. lost less to the grains than I had accounted for. All right, just gonna take a pre-boiled gravity reading. The hydrometer is reading 1050. Um, I would say it's still about 90 degrees. There's a couple calculators you can go to online that'll do a temp correction for you. Um, so that's right around 1054 at 90 degrees if you type that into a calculator. We were shooting for 1055 and we're sitting at 1054. So, all right, our boil just, uh, just came up. So we're gonna do our three and a half ounce, ounces of Comet. Um, it's a 90 minute boil, and then our next addition will be with 45 minutes left in the boil. I'm just going to use the end of the, the mash paddle to get, uh, get all the hops down in there. We'll come back with 45 minutes left in the boil and do our next addition. Sweet. Our uh, 45 minute addition is gonna be three quarters of an ounce of Amarillo. Uh, so let's just get that weighed out. So when the time's ready, we can just toss it in. All right, 0.75. these uh, hop filter baskets when I'm using uh, pellet hops. But the whole hops, they just take up so much room. I usually toss them directly into the kettle, which isn't an issue. 
Uh, we forgot to put our little uh, screen on here. So I don't want to dump them directly into the kettle because um, I basically don't want to clog my pump. I just don't want to deal with it. So I'm probably going to end up improvising and just using a mesh bag. Typically, if you have this installed, which you should, I just forgot, um, just throw that the hops directly in the whole hops. So I'm going to try and do this without making a huge mess. You definitely want gloves if you're going to do that. that that's really hot. So I'm just gonna tie this off so it doesn't hit the element, obviously, that'd be no bueno. Put the lid back on just to keep our boil going. But actually, I might just throw the hot basket back in because it's a pretty good spacer. And then I'll add the rest of my hop additions to this bag as well. So um, not ideal, but you know, part of home brewing is improvising. Um, always check to make sure you have this installed. Kind of interested to see on the comment um, I've read kind of both ways. Some people hate it, some people like it. I'm kind of interested to see if we get that kind of grapefruity note that everybody talks about if you if you go in with the late edition. So, all right, hooking up the uh, cooling water so I can recirculate through the plate chiller. Um, I like to recirculate for like 10, 15 minutes just to make sure everything's sanitized and good to go. All right, we hit uh, our 90 minute boil. Turn the water on, the uh, chili water on here. All right, we're tag teaming this brew day. I just got back from the gym and grabbing some lunch. Emmett just headed out to get some lunch. And uh, I've chilled uh, the wort down to 170. I'm gonna add some Comet and Amarillo and we're just gonna do a little uh, hop stand here. Man, ton of hops in this one. Ton of hops. I'm kind of gonna break these hops up a little bit. They were kind of compacted together. Just want to make sure, and I want to get everything down into the liquid as well. I did dunk that paddle in star sand before I popped in here. You know, as we're cooling this down, the risk for contamination increases, so. Just want to be as sanitary as possible. Okay, hops have been chilling in the kettle here for about 20 minutes, so I'm going to pop them out and cool this thing the rest of the way down. I'm not going to lie to you. It smells like a brewery in here. It does. Those stairs, Maybe. coming up the staircase is crazy. Yeah, I hope our neighbors like IPAs. <laughs> I hope so. It is pretty gnarly. Here's the thing. Neither of us drink a lot of like, really heavy duty IPAs. It's been a long time. If they complain, we'll just give them the beer. We were at the... Uh... Uh, we're at like five and a half right, right here. Woo! Well, let's uh, cool this thing the rest of the way down. Will you uh, hold this? Is it stuck? I just don't know my strength, man. Oh, you know what? That might happen. Dude, if you don't shake the shit out of this with the star sign in it, it doesn't make as many bubbles. But you, you want the bubbles? You want the bubbles? I don't know. I have no I idea. What am I, a chemical engineer? <laughs> yeah. Alright. So I just checked the numbers in Beersmith. Yeah. Without the corn sugar, um, we should be right around like 1069. Cool. So a little low. A little lower. So probably not technically in a double IPA territory since it's not 1075. Right. But pretty close. Like right below 1060. A little low. Yeah, 1058, I would say. That's what happens when you forget the sugar. Yeah. Lots of lots of in and outs today. Alright. Looks real good. So a little five and a quarter-ish? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Cool. So our numbers were out. Real important to aerate big beers. It's not as big as it's supposed to be, so it's not like huge. Two packs of USO5. Alright, I'm gonna put it in the fridge at 60. I have it set for 63. Okay, so cool. I'll swing between 62 and 64. Cool. Try having that in five days. This. Sounds good. All right, it's actually been a few weeks since we brewed the beer here, the uh, one and a half IPA. I'm gonna give it a taste. This one is solid. Uh, one of the, the best beers I think we've made thus far in this series. It's very bitter, um, lots of hops. It's, um, it, this is a, the kind of beer that you wanna drink young, you wanna just drink it right out of the cave because that's when um, the hop character um, it's going to be at its um, strongest, highest point, and um, this, this beer tastes great. We've had a bunch of folks over to the office drinking beer out of the taps here, and this has definitely been a favorite among all of the visitors. So, highly recommend this one, uh, the Resting Bitter Beer Face 1.5 IPA. If I did this one again, I, I don't think I'd change a thing. I don't know if I'd... I'd um, add the dextrose or not. In fact, we might just do it again and, and leave the dextrose out. Maybe use some different hops, um, see how that changes the taste and the feel. But uh, all in all, great recipe. Highly recommend this one.